Hi everyone, Jack Diamond here, and today we're taking a look at LightWave Modeler. If you watched my last tutorial, you know that LightWave is a 3D program that's divided into two components. The first is LightWave Layout, which we saw in our Introduction to LightWave series, and the second is LightWave Modeler. Now, LightWave Layout has some basic tools for creating 3D objects, but when you really want to get into detailed objects, you really want to use the LightWave Modeler to do that. So I want to start by going over some of the basics of the LightWave Modeler system. The first thing you'll notice is that it's made up of four viewports by default, and this is very similar to a lot of other 3D applications that are out there. You've got your front view here, the top view, and the right view, which are called orthographic views. You've also got a perspective view up here in the top corner. One of the strengths of LightWave is the infinite amount of configuration you can do. You don't have to have this if you don't want to. There's a little button up here which will increase any view to full size. You can do that with any of the views as I said. But not only that, you can change the entire way that LightWave looks. I'm going to push D on the keyboard for display options and you could actually see that the layout is set to quad right now but I could just as easily set it to say three on the left and one on the right and then I could modify each of these individual views and say okay I want my perspective over here for instance and so that's what I've got and you could change each of these in the way they actually display things personally I like the quad so I'm gonna stick with the quad you could also change things like colors here if you want to what's shown and what's not shown and there's a lot of other things you can change this menu one of the first things I like to do when I'm working in LightWave Modeler is to set my content directory. So I typically will create a brand new folder called 3D or something like that and then inside my 3D folder I'll create three new folders. The first is going to be called Images, the second is going to be called Scenes, and the third is going to be called Objects. And if you set this directory structure up properly, LightWave will put all of your new objects in your objects folder, all of your scene files in your scene folder, and I'm going to let you guess what goes in the images folder. So the first thing to do is to set up our content directory inside of LightWave. So I'm just going to copy this address here, and then select O on the keyboard, and set my content directory directly here, just by pasting that right in there if I create a new object when I go to save it it should default into my new objects directory that I've created so you're probably asking yourself how do I create a brand new object well objects are created using the create tab and when you select create the top left corner here you'll see a bunch of creation options that appear on this side in order to change the menu options on this side you can scroll through the tabs at the top of the screen Today we'll just be looking at some of the basics. So under the Create tab, I'm going to create a new box. And I do that just by dragging a new box. And you should be able to see that by dragging the corners of this box or the sides, you can manipulate the size of the actual object. One of the things you should do when you're creating 3D objects is to try to model to scale. So here we can see in the bottom left corner that the grid size is set to 500 millimeters. And this will change just based on your grid settings. If I zoom out, you can see that now my grid size is 5 meters. So each one of these squares represents 5 meters by 5 meters. So set your scale appropriately. I'm going to set up my scale to be about, I don't know, let's go 500 millimeters which is basically what the default is and you'll probably notice that it's kinda of hard to drag an exact size of object here it will snap to these if you want to actually do that but there is a better way and that is to use the numeric panel which is down here you could click on that alternatively you could click N on the keyboard and one of the nice things about LightWave is that all of the keyboard shortcuts are located on the buttons when you see a letter by itself you just push that letter. When you see a letter with an up arrow, it's a control push. And when you see a letter with a plus, and there's an example right there, you use the shift and the letter. So in the numeric panel here, I'm going to create a box that's exactly 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. So I'm just going to enter 2, 
tab two, tab two, and I want it centered around the origin, so I'm just going to enter zero, 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 and I'll leave the rest at defaults. One thing to note is that Lightwave hasn't committed this object yet, so I can still actually grab it and move it if I want to, change the size, things like that. So in order to commit the object, you basically just need to exit out of the box selection tool. So when I click the box selection tool, I've now unselected box creation mode and basically committed the object. I now have a box. In order to center the object in the screen, just to make sure that it's easier to work with, I'm going to push the A key on the keyboard. It's a keyboard shortcut, which basically zooms my entire object to full screen. You'll notice it's also changed my grid size to 200 millimeters down at the bottom here. Okay, And I can zoom out a little bit if I want to, to put that back. It doesn't really matter. I'm not actually changing the size of the object, just the size of the grid. Let's create another object just to get a feel for how this object creation stuff works. This time I'm going to create a cone. And a cone is created basically the same way. You can drag it out. It drags from the center so you can position it if you want to. And there we go. I've just created a cone. Click to turn it off and I have a basic cone. I'm not too concerned about whether or not the size is perfect or not because I'm not building a real object. But this should give you a real idea of uh, how things are positioned. So here I'm looking down from the top so you can see the point of the cone. Here I'm looking from the, well, Lightwave labels this as the back view, but traditionally I've always known this as the front view, so just kind of think about that. And here's the right side, so I'm looking from over here. Okay. Try not to get confused when you rotate things around because it's it's easy to uh, to get lost if you're not sure exactly what it is you're looking at. If you want to try creating your own objects, there's a lot of options here, and there's even more under the More tab, things you can create. In order to make changes to objects, well, you want to use the tools that are on the Modify tab. So click on the Modify tab, and you'll see a set of basic tools. The most commonly used tool is the Move tool, and you can access that by pushing the letter T on the keyboard or by clicking the Move button. When you click the Move button, your cursor turns into this little uh, different kind of plus here, and now when you click and drag, you can move objects around. This works in all of the windows, and you'll notice that the views all stay lined up when you do move your objects around. The second tool is the Rotate tool, and you can access that by pushing Y on the keyboard or by clicking this button. And it's important to note as well that when you click and drag, you're going to rotate around the point where you actually clicked and dragged. So for example, if I want to rotate around this center point here, I can click on that. If I run and rotate around the origin, I can click on that. And this works no matter what view you click on. Be careful because, again, it's really easy to get things confused here. Luckily, there's always undo commands. So Control z on the keyboard will always undo you right back to where you were. The third most common tool is the Size tool. And be careful because there's two different ways you can use the Size tool. There's the Straight Size tool, which is a uniform scaling tool, which basically scales everything on all axes equally. Or the Stretch tool, which allows you to stretch things in one direction but not another. The next question you're asking yourself is, what if I want to move one of these objects and not the other? Well, Lightwave doesn't think of objects in terms of objects. It thinks of everything in terms of points, edges or lines, and polygons or surfaces. So in order to change each of those things, you look down here in the bottom corner and you can see point mode, edge mode, or polygon mode. And you can choose one of these three modes by clicking on the button and choose whichever one works for you. You can also cycle between them using the spacebar, which is nice. So just by pushing the spacebar, you can actually select the different options. One of the things to note is that when nothing is selected in Lightwave, everything is selected. So that's why when I click the Move tool, I can move everything together because I haven't selected any one object. So in order to select just the cube, for instance, here, I'm going to, first of all, get out of the Move tool by turning off the Move button. 
and then I'm going to select all of its polygons and I can do that by basically clicking and dragging over every surface of the square or the uh, cube. It's hard to tell that you have everything selected here. In this case you can see a number down at the bottom that says selected six which means I have six polygons selected. That basically tells me that I have every polygon in the cube selected. A cube is easy to know because you know there's six sides of a cube but if you tried to select the cone for instance you might not know. To deselect an object just click anywhere in the gray area at the top or at the bottom of the screen here and that will deselect everything. One of the other nice things you can do is right click and drag a selection around your objects and whether you complete it or not when you let go it will auto complete. And now I've selected the entire cone and again if I select the move tool for instance now I'm just moving the cone. You want to be careful how you move these things and how you leave these things because if I put the cone inside the cube for instance and then deselect it, it might be hard to reselect. So just be aware of that. In order to make things easier to position or to manipulate, Lightwave uses layers and I can actually remove something from this layer and put it on a different layer. And I'm going to do that by using Control X to cut and then up here you can see I'm on layer 1. I can actually select layer 2 and then control V to paste the object. Now I can toggle back and forth between the first and second layers just by selecting them and you can see I have a cube on the first layer and a cone on the second layer. And if I wanted to see them in relation to one another I could hold down shift and select multiple layers and now I'll see them together. I can also put one layer in the foreground and another layer in the background. And doing this will be useful when we get into some of the more advanced features of Modeler. For now, I'm just going to put everything back on one layer by selecting both layers, doing a global Control X and a Control V into the first layer again. So what if I wanted to change the colors of some of these objects? Well, that's done through surfacing, as you might have guessed. So let's say I wanted to make the cube red. Well, it's important to know that by default, everything you create in Modeler has the same surface. And if I click on Surface Editor up here, you'll see that I have an object called Unnamed. I still have my other object uh, open as well, so don't get confused here. But my Unnamed object, which is this one, has one surface called Default. And right now, it's white, or a kind of white color. If I select this color and change it to red, well the entire surface becomes red which means everything that has that surface applied is also red. So how do I change the surface of just one object? Well I do that by selecting the object and then selecting the surface command which is located at the bottom of the interface here. The shortcut key here is Q and that's what I'll usually use. This allows you to change the surface of all of the selected polygons. So here I'm going to enter cube and I'm going to set an initial color of red just to be really confusing. So it looks like nothing's happened but that's because I also have the default surface set to red. So I'm going to deselect everything and then go into my surface editor and now I can change the default surface color back to that white color or maybe a, uh, a light gray color there. And now I have a red cube and a white cone. If I wanted to change the surface of the cone as well I could select the cone, push Q, type in a name for the surface and then set a value. And now I have two objects, well, multiple polygons actually, with different colors applied. So what if you wanted to change the surface of just one side? Well, the nice thing is you can select a polygon and give it a unique surface. I'll call this one front of cube and I'll set this to blue. Okay. 
And so now, only the front of my cube is actually blue. Using these sorts of surfacing techniques, it's really easy to make objects that are very complex with different surface properties. I want to show you guys the Multiply tab really quick here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and just show you one of the neat features, and that's Mirror, which allows you to really quickly create multiple objects just by dragging out a mirror plane. Probably pretty obvious what just happened there. I basically selected a mirror plane and created more objects. I'm going to mirror again, and every time you do this you just select the tool, turn off the tool to actually lock the objects in place, and then mirror again, mirror again, mirror again, and now I have many many objects and if I push A on the keyboard again I can sort of center everything. Well that was a kind of cool diversion but let's do some more work with just the one object or one set of objects that we have. What if you want to get into doing some more advanced editing? Back to the modify tab here. You've seen me select a single polygon and do manipulation there but what about modifying at the point level? Well, instead of selecting polygons, let's go down to points and then click on a point. Be careful when you select a point in one of the views because remember, I'm looking at the front face of an object here and it will select all of the points that look like they're connected even if they're not. So I can click on another point to deselect it here. So here, again, using my numeric option, I can see that I have one point selected and I'm going to push T on the keyboard to move that point and then I'm just going to drag it into a different place. So it's hard to tell what happened from the perspective view here but when I start to move it around you can see well I've actually distorted that cube quite a bit. I can do the same thing with the top of this cone. Make it shorter, move it over, make it taller. There's a lot of things I could actually do here. What if I wanted to move the whole side of an object? Well, I could either select all of its points, or I could go back to polygon mode and just select the polygon and move it directly. I want to show you guys one more sort of advanced feature of Lightwave here, one that you might use or might not. I'm going to put the cone on a background layer here and show my cube as well. Then I'm going to move the cone into a position kind of like this. And maybe I'll move it up a little bit as well. And maybe just for kicks I'll rotate it. There we go. Now you can see the cone is very clearly intersecting the box object. I'm going to use the apostrophe key to flip my foreground and background layers. And then I'm going to go to the Construct tab, click Boolean, and Subtract. And now you should be able to see that the cone shape has actually been subtracted from the box. And if I deselect my background layer, you can see that a lot cleaner. So using this sort of tool, you can actually do some pretty advanced things with Lightwave. So play with it, show me what you got, create a video response, or send me a picture on Twitter. I'm looking forward to what you create. Have fun with Modeler, and we'll see you next time. If you'd like to see more behind-the-scenes videos or visual effects tutorials, consider subscribing to this channel. You can also leave a comment below telling me exactly what type of video you'd like to see. If you want to help me out, you can like this video or share it on your favorite social media sites. You can even follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Jack Diamond, and I'll see you next time.